celebrity deaths, serial killers, cop shows. Why are people so fascinated with true crime? For author, podcast host, documentarian, and tour guide Scott Michaels, he's created an entire career out of it. My name is Scott, and I own Dearly Departed Tours in Hollywood. I've been called the Perez Hilton of the afterlife <laughs> because I do like to dig up the dirt, too. I started Dearly Departed Tours in 2005. We focus on a dark subject matter, but our focal point is the victim. These people are remembered not just as victims of their crimes. A person will die two deaths. The first time they'll die is when they physically die. The second time is the last time their name is spoken out loud. And that's exactly the niche that we fill. They are remembered and their names are said out loud. It's Julie Departed Tours is a lighthearted look at the dark side of Hollywood. When people come to our museum, it's sort of a classroom in a weird way. We have a brassiere that belonged to Sharon Tate. We have Mae West's dentures, which is pretty weird. It brings a smile to my face to have her, literally her smile, in my hands. I have a tile from the swimming pool that Brian Jones uh, drowned in. I have a piece of the floor that Bobby Kennedy landed on when he was shot in, in the Ambassador Hotel. We also have about eight people's cremated remains and two animals, two dogs here. We try to make sure that everybody is happy here. We care a great deal about it. When you take the Dearly Departed tour, you're gonna to see all sorts of things. I mean, you'll see a cemetery, restaurants where people had their last supper, uh, street corners where somebody passed away. So this house on our left is the home where Mr. and Mrs. LaBianca were killed late in the night of August 9th, 1969. I think sometimes people are interested in these things because sometimes they're so shocking that someone is capable of doing things to each other. The tone of everything has changed. When I started doing this 25 years ago, there was no internet. You don't have to hide your interest anymore. It's brought people out of shame. It's sort of giving human faces and life to those victims. Everyone knows who killers are. Everyone knows their names more so than their victims. That's sort of sad. Death itself isn't necessarily a beautiful thing, but I think the tributes are. The point is they're honored and they're not forgotten. And that's the most important thing. Don't ever forget. Everyone, please welcome Scott Michaels to the show. And Scott, there's no doubt that there seems to be this pervasive fascination with death. And, and you described your own fascination. How did that start for you? I grew up, I was sort of exposed to this from a young age. I grew up in Detroit. I grew up on an intersection, on a corner at an intersection where fatal accidents happened. It was a dangerous traffic corner. And it was something that, you know, it was a normal part of our life. I didn't know it to be any different, to you know, people be killed in front of my house. Over the years, uh, I've known people that have been murdered, about five people that have been murdered, personally knew them. And I'm not saying that to be dangerous, it's just the way it was. I didn't know anything differently. So I was sort of desensitized from an early age. Now, uh, my mom, a homemaker raising four kids, she wasn't, uh, she was looking for an outlet, so she, she painted, you know, she wasn't an artist, you know, she just liked doing this as a hobby, and she made mosaics. And it wasn't until much later on that I realized it was, uh, it, <laughs> she, she was making this wonderful Three Kings mosaic that is made out of car accident glass. Now, it wasn't contrived, it wasn't let's do something really weird here. It was something like, I need mirror, I need, I need white glass. This is back when headlights were glass and taillights were red glass. She said, I need my red glass. So we go out into the corner and pick up this, uh, the red glass out of the, out of the gutter and give it to her and she made it. So it was sort of, you know, just a part of our life growing up. I was desensitized or exposed to it from an early age. Mm. And I, I would think business is good, right? Here in Los <laughs> Angeles, I mean, People can't get enough of these of these stories. Yeah, the tone has changed most certainly since, uh, uh, you know, as the, as the tape said, it was 25 years ago when I started doing this, and people were literally looking down their nose at us. Uh, there was a time when we would pass Jimmy Stewart's house on a regular basis, and Jimmy Stewart would come out and wave to us. He was a really nice guy. Then he came, it came to the time where he died, and we were driving by that day, and the press were outside, and they were like, you're monsters, you're monsters. It's like... We're, you're the ones that are jumping on the bandwagon, not me. You know, this is what I do. And Mr. Stewart was great with us. So uh, it's it just, the, the whole tone has changed. You used to have to hide your interest. Uh, they, somebody told me once you used to hide your true crime magazines in the back of your grocery bag. And now there's 24-hour cable networks devoted strictly mm -hmm. to it. So, yeah, it's changed. 